Hi everyone, I decided to do a quick homework helper video for Lesson 5 homework. Um, particularly for the area model aspect of it, because I know that'll be the most confusing to people. I'm not going to do the actual problems on this one, let's look instead at this example, uh, 21 times 23. In a moment we'll take a look at how to solve it using the standard algorithm of multiplication, uh, like this over here, but for a minute let's, let's draw an area model for this problem. An area model is really just a rectangular array. So let's use a really easy example to make sure that we all know what we're talking about. If I solve, try to solve 3 times 4, this is a beginning of third grade kind of problem. Um, I could draw three groups of four. And I would see there that there are 12. Um, the other thing I could do is if I made this rectangular and thought about each spot as a box, I could find the area of this rectangle. Um, a 3 by 4 rectangle is going to have an area of 12, just like there were 12 objects in the array. So how does this help us solve these more complicated fifth grade problems? Well, let's take a look. Here is my 21 by 23 rectangle. Now, this on, it, on its own doesn't really help us because I don't know many people who've memorized their 21 facts or their 23 facts. So, what can we do to this problem to help us solve it more easily? Well, this number, 21, can be thought of as 20 and 1. What if, what if I split this rectangle in that way? So instead of that side being 21, what if I split it and I make that section 1 and this section 20? Suddenly we have two rectangles. Here we are now suddenly looking at easier to solve problems because the top rectangle would be solved by 1 times 23 and this would be 20 times 23. 20 times 23 isn't totally easy, but we've been practicing strategies to help us solve it. And then what we would do to find the, the larger rectangle, we would add these back together to make it uh, 23 times 21 again. So if we take these one at a time, 1 times 23 is straightforward. That's 23. One group of 23 is 23. I'm going to use mental math here. Uh, 20 times 23 is going to be the same as 2 times 23 times 10. So 2 times 23 is 46, and 46 times 10 is 460. So, and if you're not, uh, uh, not sure how I, I did that mental math, it's worth taking a look back at some of the earlier homeworks. I'm not sure if I did a video or not on that strategy, but I'd be happy to if that would be helpful. Um, now what do I do? Well, those two are only the partial products of my multiplication. I have to add the partial products back together. This should be a zero. Uh, like so. Just using the standard algorithm of addition, we find out that 23 times 20 equals 483. Now, if we compare it with the standard algorithm, which is what most of us older people are familiar with, it, it, it works out the same way. Um, I see over here that I've actually written this in a way that's unhelpful. I'm going to switch the order of the factors here. I, I'm allowed to do that because of the commutative property. Uh, now it's going to look more like our area model. Um, and we can do this with the partial products method, like this, or we can go ahead and use the full standard algorithm. And if your parents want to help you and show you the traditional method where we go uh, 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 2 is 2, add a 0. But let, let's talk it through and make sure we understand what's happening. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to imagine that we're splitting the number between 1s and 10s. And I'm going to multiply the 1's first, so 1 times 23 is, whoops, not 3, uh, 23, like that. And then, remember, of course, that 
that this, this 2, isn't it really a 2, it's a 20. So again, we're multiplying 20 times 23. 20 times 23, as we saw it before, is 460. Add them together, and the sum is, whoops, the sum is 483. Um, now, let's just talk through the more traditional method. Let's just see how this works. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 2 is 2. Those go down below. And then we, we add the 0 because what we're really doing here, this 0 is really um, showing that we're multiplying by a number in the tens place. So we're multiplying by 20. We're kind of, we're going to do the multiplying by 2 and then multiply the whole thing by 10 and shift it one place value to the left. So that's where the 0 comes from. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 2 is 4. Um, we're, we're adding, we're multiplying one place value at a time in that most traditional method, and that is totally fine to use. Um, it's mathematically sound. It's just important to understand where it comes from so that you can use it in lots of different ways. I'm going to show one more area model. Um, I probably won't do the standard algorithm. Well, maybe I will do the standard algorithm with that one. But I want to show you how it works from this triple digit number. And it's not really going to be any different. Um, I'm going to set it up. This is not a very realistic rectangle for these numbers, but it's helpful for the math. So let's just pretend that this makes sense. Um, and what I mean by that is that 12 is so much less than 143 that this is not what this rectangle would really look like. But play along with me for a minute, and it, it just it's going to help with the math. So 12, what can we split that into? 12, we could split that into 10 and 2. Suddenly this problem is looking a lot easier. The top rectangle is 2 times 143, which is 286. And 10 times 143 equals, I'm not going to have enough room here, uh, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make room, because that's my responsibility as the person solving the math problem. I'm going to write a little smaller and move it a little bit. All right, 10 times 143, that's one shift in place value, so that's 1,430. Now, I have two partial products that I'm going to add. Uh, you'll notice I, I switched the order. It, it, you want to do this in whatever order makes sense to you. Um, I often like to put larger numbers on top when I'm adding. But uh, like multiplication, addition has the commutative property. We could solve it in whatever order makes the most sense to us. Uh, 7, 1, 1,716. I want to check me at home quick. Actually, I've got a better idea. I'll check myself with that very, very traditional method. Let's, uh, let's zoom in over here. And let's take a look at this problem. So 143 times 12. Um, I'm going to talk it through, and I'm going to use the method that your parents probably know. Okay, so I'm going to start with the ones place. And 2 times 3 is 6. Then I look at the next digit. 2 times 4 is 8. And remember, that's not really 8. It's 80, because I'm doing 2 times 40. 2 times 1, or 2 times 100, 286 there. So, yeah, 2 times 1 is 2, so it's 200s. Now, why am I putting this 0 here? Well, it's because now I'm multiplying by 10. It's not a 1 there, it's a 10. So I need to recognize that I'm uh, multiplying by a number in a larger place value by uh, putting that 0 in. So 1 times 3, 1 times 4, 1 times 1. And you see that what we've taken is 143 and uh, shifted it one place value. Find the sum. Now, one thing I don't like about what I did just there. Um, notice where I put that 1 where I was carrying it. It's pretty high up. I think this is going to look a lot better if I move it down and it's clear that I'm not multiplying 112. Okay, that looks better to me. My work is clearer. So, let's see. How did I do? Ah, different methods, same answer. That's good. That means I probably solved it correctly. 
Um, I hope that's en enough to uh, help you through with the rest of the problems. The first ones ask for area model, and after that, you can use the traditional method. You're still welcome to use an area model if you like to um, to help you solve it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask.